is this very big number divisible by three? Perhaps you're familiar with the fact or theorem that if you add the digits of a number together and that digit sum is divisible by three, then the number itself is divisible by three. Or perhaps this is new to you. Either way, we're going to prove this result first before we use it to find out whether our number is divisible by three. And to prove it, we're going to be using modular arithmetic. So if you haven't checked out my introductory video on modular arithmetic, do check that out first as we'll be using some of the ideas from that video here. Before we set about proving this theorem, there are a couple of things I want to think about first. First of all, I want to think about what happens when you take powers of 10 modulo 3. Let's start with just 10 modulo 3. So if you're imagining a 3 hour clock, 9 is divisible by 3. So 9 would appear at the top of the 3 hour clock. And so to get to 10, you just jump one hour further. So 10 would be at 1 o'clock, or 10 is congruent to 1 modulo 3. How about 10 squared in modulo 3? Well, we can write 10 squared as 10 times 10. And now we're dealing with a product, so that suggests it's a good time to use our product theorem. So here we have this theorem that says instead of evaluating 10 times 10, which is 100, and taking that bigger number, modulo 3, instead we can find what each individual component of the multiplication is, modulo 3, and then multiply those together. So we already know that 10 is congruent to 1, modulo 3, so this theorem tells us that 10 times 10 is congruent to 1 times 1 mod 3. 1 times 1 is of course just 1, so this shows us that 10 squared is congruent to 1 modulo 3. How about 10 to the k, where k is any positive integer? So k could be 1, it could be 2, but it could also be 3, 4, 5, it could be 100. Well again if we think about this as writing out the product in full, so 10 to the k, is the same as saying 10 times 10 times 10, so on, k times. And again, we can use this multiplication theorem, which tells us that this is congruent, so 1 times 1, and so on, k times as well, because each component of the multiplication, the 10, is congruent to 1. So we can write it like this, and 1 times 1 times 1, however many times, is always going to just be equal to 1. So this shows that 10 to the k is congruent to 1, where k can be any positive integer. So this is quite cool because we've proved a general result about powers of 10 modulo 3. They're always going to be congruent to 1 when it's a positive power. The next thing I want to think about before we set about proving our theorem is writing numbers in expanded form. So for instance, take the number 235. This number consists of two hundreds three tens and five units. So we can break this up. We can say that this number is the same as two lots of 100. 100 is the same as 10 squared, plus three lots of 10 to give you the 30, plus five on the end. So 235 is the same as doing this calculation. And we can do the same for a general number. We can write any number in this format. So say we have a general number with the digits a n minus 1, a n minus 2, and so on, down to a 0. So there are n digits of this number. So this is not representing a multiplication. Instead, each of these letters is representing a different digit of a number that has n digits. How do we write this in expanded form? Well, in a very similar way to how we did it here, we just have to be a bit careful about how many tens we multiply each of the digits by. So this is this written in expanded form. So you can see you've got the A0 digit is added at the end, the A1 digit, which represents A1 lots of 10, is here, A2 represents A2 lots of 100, so that's like the, the 2 up here, and that's A2 times 10 squared in expanded form, and then all the way up, so we're allowing our number to be as big as we want it to be. And our first digit here is represented by a n minus 1 times 10 to the power of n minus 1. So it can take a little bit of thinking just to make sure you're happy with what powers of 10 we're multiplying each digit by in our expanded form. So just take a moment to make sure you're happy with this line. 
So we've written a general number in expanded form. Now I want to think about what is this general expanded form format, modulo 3. Well, you can see we've got lots of powers of 10 here, and we know things about powers of 10 modulo 3. We've shown that any positive power of 10 is congruent to 1 modulo 3. So using our theorem about addition and multiplication, which allows us to perform modular arithmetic within the brackets here, we can see that this line is congruent to this modulo 3. So this is just replacing all the powers of 10 with a 1, because we showed here that that is what 10 to the power of k, where k is any positive integer, is modulo 3. And now we can simplify this because anything times a 1 is itself. So this is just the same as a to the n minus 1 plus a to the n minus 2 and so on plus a2 plus a1 plus a, a naught at the end. So this is kind of cool. What we've shown is that any number, so remember this is just a number where these are the digits, so it's not a multiplication, this is just a number, any number is congruent to the sum of its digits modulo 3. And this is going to be the key ingredient of our proof of the theorem that we're trying to show. So let's remind ourselves of the theorem we're trying to prove. So we're trying to show that if the sum of a number's digits is divisible by 3, then the number itself is divisible by 3. Let's have a go at proving this with the information that we've already shown. So to start our proof of this theorem, we're going to first assume that we have a number where the sum of the number's digits is divisible by 3. So we're going to assume that that is the case. And then we want to prove that if this is the case, the number is divisible by 3. So our first line of the proof is going to be the assumption in the theorem. So let's say we have a number and we're going to write it in the same way that we did over here. Say we've got this number where these are all the digits of the number and we're supposing it has digit sum divisible by 3. Now, what does it mean if the digit sum is divisible by 3? Well, that means if you add up all the digits, the digit sum is divisible by 3. And if something is divisible by 3, then it's going to appear at the top of the three hour clock. So that means the digit sum is congruent to 0 modulo 3. But we've shown that in modulo 3, this digit sum is actually congruent to the number itself. So that's what we showed here. We've shown that this digit sum of a number is the same in modulo 3 as the number itself. But we're assuming that this section of this congruence is 0. And so that means that this left hand side has to be congruent to 0 modulo 3 as well. So just simply by noticing that these two things are congruent in modulo 3 and this is congruent to 0 modulo 3, that means that this is also congruent to 0 modulo 3. But what does this mean if you've got a number congruent to 0 modulo 3? Well, we've already said that means that the number appears at the top of the three hour clock. And so that means that this number is divisible by three. Alternatively, you can think if the number's congruent to zero modulo three, it means that when you divide it by three, it leaves remainder zero. So that means this number is divisible by three. But that's exactly what we were trying to prove. We were trying to show that if the number's digits is divisible by three, then the number itself is divisible by 3. And so we have proved this theorem here. And so now that we've proved this theorem, I'm happy that we can use it to finally answer our question. Is this very big number divisible by 3? And so by this theorem, all we have to do is sum up the digits and see if the digit sum is divisible by 3. Now the digit sum of this, we've got 1 plus 4, I can ignore the zeros because they won't contribute to the sum. Adding zero doesn't do anything. So I'll skip those zeros, plus one, plus two, and plus one at the end. What is this? This is five, six, eight, nine. This equals nine. Nine is divisible by three. So by this theorem, 
the number is divisible by three? So the answer is yes. This very big number is divisible by three. So now you know how to check if any number is divisible by three. Perhaps you did already know this, but now you know why it's true and you know how to prove it using modular arithmetic. If you want to see more funky number questions answered using modular arithmetic, do check out the rest of the videos in this series. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more aesthetic, massy videos, do check out my channel and subscribe.